I think uh, it's obvious that I rise in support of amendments 27, 28 and 41. Just at the, as at the committee stage, there were so many noble peers who wanted to sign this amendment that um, I, d I wasn't a able to, but of course they have my wholehearted support and I agree with everything that's been said so far. And I think the government is well aware that the public very much cares these days about the environment and I think that not accepting this amendment is going to be a real problem for the government. They're going to hear a lot from the public. I was speaking to a Conservative peer last week and that peer was shocked and surprised that the government was not bringing over all EU law into UK law, uh, as they promised. Um, I shall save that peer's blushes by not revealing a name. I then asked that peer if they ever listened to anything I said in the chamber, and they said no. Um, <laughs> but the point is, that person was shocked because it was believed that the government would honour its promise to bring over all EU law, they're not. Uh, I don't want to go on again about that, but I feel very cheated, quite honestly. And I think the government has, um, has to understand just how angry you've made a lot of people who voted leave. They feel cheated as well. Um, and I have to re re repeat the very, very serious point that of all the issues that lose out, um, uh, 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 with, the, with this particular bill, the environment is the biggest loser. And we have to make changes to this bill to make sure that that doesn't happen. The EU's environmental principles and standards are the cornerstone of environmental law in this country. Successful legal challenges have been brought and there are ongoing cases through our courts which seek to apply the environmental principles further. As this bill is currently worded, we risk losing huge chunks of environmental law and the, the crucial enforcement role currently undertaken by the EU. And the government's admitted there's going to be a problem when we, when we leave the EU. Uh, the Secretary of State for the Environment seems to be promising a new bill every week at the moment in the stark recognition that there is a wide field of environmental law that's got to be retained and improved. And the consultation. We were promised that we would have an update on the consultation before report stage, and we haven't had it. It's another broken promise. The consultation is supposed to feed into a bill which is supposed to make sure that there's a new body. I've got the list of EU bills here, the EU Exit Bills Guide. I can't see that bill on the grid, so, so where is it? It's already going to be incredibly difficult to produce all the bills that have been promised and to get them through before exit day. I simply don't believe that that can be done. The government would have to perform a miracle, and that's not something that it's famous for. And the consultation anyway um, could lead to nothing or to a much weaker proposal that's going to be unsatisfactory. We just don't know. Um, these amendments aren't special interest amendments to try and get something better than already exists. They do nothing more and nothing less than ensure that environmental law in our country is, the, is going to be the same on the 28th of March as it will be on the 30th of March, the seamless transition that the noble Lord, Lord Inglewood referred to. And the government has had the, cons has had the opportunity to address all our concerns, but so far have chosen not to. They have, in my opinion, left this, no this House no choice but to amend the bill yet again. My Lord, sorry. Thank you.